Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. Tops 2021 Series 1 is right around the corner, and I am back with another set review. This is my first one for the 2021 card collecting season. I've got an all new revamped system. I think you guys are going to love it, but more importantly, we're going to find out is Tops 2021 Series 1 what it's all cracked up to be? Should it be a set that you get, or should it be one that you forget? There's only one way to find out. It's time to watch the most in depth set guide and review you're going to find anywhere on the internet. It's time for One Cent's review of 2021. 21 top series one. All right, so the excitement is boiling over. It is time for 2021 top series one to finally be released. It is the start of the 2021 card collecting season, and I am back with another set guide and review. And per usual, we still have the exclusive one cent sensational set ranking. However, we have revised it just a tad for 2021. What is the exclusive one cent sensational set ranking? Well, it's where we take a little bit of a scoring system and we say from one to five stars how good is the set and how do we get to the stars well we give them scores so let me explain a little bit first of all first thing to know you are not going to find a more in-depth ranking system anywhere on the internet what we'll do is we'll break the set down into 10 different categories each category is worth one to ten points then we add up those points and then we and then that score will be anywhere between one and a hundred possible points. And then as we look at our scoring system over to the left, we give it a one to five star ranking. Now we do have some new stuff for 2021. The revised scoring structure, it's a little bit different. Last year, I felt it was a little bit hard to get five stars because it was 85 to 100. However, it may still be as hard this year based upon some other things that you'll see throughout the review. The scoring comparison will also compare what this set scored in 2020. So for example, 2020 top series one, that had a score. I'm going to compare to see if this year's set is better than last year's set and vice versa. We also have some category refinements. The relics are now part of the insert category. So if you go back and watch my old reviews, you will know what I'm talking about there. And I have streamlined some of the content in order to make it a little bit shorter of an overall video. So let's get right into it. But I want you guys to do one more thing before we begin. Be sure to hit like on this video. That is the best way to get these set reviews viewed by the most people. And of course, subscribe because we're at the beginning of the 2021 card season. And this is the place where you will get all of your set guides for 2021. So be sure to hit the bell as well, guys. So that way you get it as soon as it comes out. So what do we go over in the uh, in these set guides and reviews? Well, first, I'm going to tell you the set highlights will be the 10,000 foot view of what top series one is all about. I'm going to go into all the different buying formats that you can get this in. Then we'll dig a little bit deeper, go into the key cards. Then we will hit off on all of the parallels, inserts, relics and autos that you can hit in this set. And then we're going to take a little break and talk about breaks for a little bit. I'm going to give you six teams that you should be targeting in breaks. A couple sleepers, who I think the best team is, who I think the team with the most value is. I'm going to go over what the set positives are, what the set negatives are, and that's what's going to bring us to the one cent sensational set rating. And then, as per usual, we will take top series one and rate it with all of the other 2021 ser uh, sets that have come out to date. And there's been a total of two, so we'll see where top series one comes in. However, we're going to dig right into the set highlights. First thing to know, 
Top Series 1 is in its 70th year. It is Topps' flagship release. It's their most popular release. And it is the first release in a three-part series. So they have Series 1, Series 2, and Update Series. This year, there is a 330-card base set checklist that is down from 350 in 2020. Like I said, it's in its, 70, it's in its 70th year of production, and that anniversary is celebrated strongly throughout the entire set for the parallel rainbow we have a 13 color parallel rainbow and there will be more exclusive ones like the yellow walgreens i'm sure that'll come out but for the standard you're going to see 13 the big change on the design the white borders are returning to the flagship set pretty excited about that and they have introduced eight new insert sets for 2021 the 1986 Tops design is featured heavily throughout all of the relics, the inserts, and the autos. That set is in its 35th anniversary, so they're celebrating the 35th anniversary of the 1986 Tops design as well. And the unique Tops experience tickets are returning for 2021. You're going to find 25 of those are available in Top Series 1. It's an ultra exclusive experience that Tops is giving to the lucky golden ticket holders, if you will, for the unique experience. So it is also available all over the place. It's going to be available at your LCS. It's going to be available in retail formats, so long as all of the flippers don't get it first, but it's going to be available everywhere. And maybe most importantly, many of the rookies that were called up in 2020 that were not featured in the later Top Series 2 and update sets from last year are going to be featured in this set. So where can you buy this stuff? Well, first there's hobby boxes that you can buy online or at your LCS and you can start with the jumbo box. The jumbo box is going to have 10 packs per box, 46 cards per pack. So that gives you a total of 460 cards, not 480 like I have listed here. Um, but the current price on those is around 260 bucks. You might be able to find some a little bit cheaper. Your cost per card going to be uh, 50 four cents but what you are guaranteed to get is one auto two relics and you will get two silver packs included and five gold foil parallels which are exclusive to the jumbo format and you also get a box topper which is a 1951 tops major league all-star box topper you could also buy the hobby box hobby box 24 packs per box 14 cards per pack 336 total cards for a cost of around 150 bucks so your cost per card comes down a little bit to 45 cents but you are guaranteed one auto or relic that is not and relic it is or relic and you get one silver pack and you are guaranteed to get two rainbow foil parallels as well but a lot of people look for this stuff in retail so let's cover that off as well a retail blaster a retail display box is going to be 24 packs per box 16 cards per pack for 384 cards and the cost is only 80 dollars on that so the cost per card comes all the way down to 21, but no relic or auto guaranteed. But what you are guaranteed is to get 24 1952 redo inserts, which we'll cover off on those in a minute. You can also get a blaster box that's going to have seven packs per box, 14 cards per pack. So you get 98 total cards. Price on that around 21 bucks. So it is around 21 cents per card and you are guaranteed to get one relic. They will also have hanger boxes. Hanger boxes are going to have 67 cards this year, just like in 2020. Price on those around $12. So cost per card going to be 18 cents. And you do get two of those 1952 redo inserts. Fat packs are also going to be available. So that's going to have 40 cards per pack. 40 total cards, $7 uh, current price. And the cost per card on that, a paltry 18 cents. And that is going to be your lowest cost per card that you can find in any of the buying formats. There also is tins that I actually did not put on here. Um, but the tins will also have 40 cards. Those are going to be around 15 bucks. So if you're looking for the tins, you should be able to find those. Those will be highly sought after. You get a few chrome cards in the tins that you're not going to find in the fat pack. So that's the reason for the price increase. Um, the other thing to know is individual gravity feed packs are going to be available. And there's additional formats that will likely be available depending on where you are shopping. They're just not all over the internet, but we'll probably see a few surprises, maybe some blister packs and stuff like that that also come out. 
So what are the key cards in 2021 Top Series 1? Well, let's cover off on the rookies first because that's what everyone is interested in for this set. The first rookie you might want to be looking for is going to be Joey Bart. There's also Joe Adele from the Angels. You've got Ryan Mountcastle from the Orioles. Nick Madrigal from the White Sox. Alec Bohm. Don't call him Bomb. It's pronounced Bohm. Uh, he's from the Phillies. You've got Dylan Carlson from the Cardinals and Casey Mize from from the Tigers. But there's also parallels, autos, inserts, relics, all sorts of that stuff. So the first one that I'd be looking for is going to be the 70 years of Topps baseball inserts. Those are going to be iconic card designs with players that are retired, newer players, all sorts of different things, but reimagined onto some of the older designs. Very cool uh, insert set that they got there. And then there's also the Topps reverence auto patch cards. Probably my favorite relic that you're going to find in this set they're very hard to find they're all numbered to like 10 but they are autoed and they are beautiful patch autos maybe they had them last year they are fantastic um the other thing for one of the parallels they've introduced a new parallel color we'll color off we'll we'll cover off on all those in just a second but there is a new platinum parallel color they're going to be numbered to 70 for the 70th anniversary and then keep in mind we also have the 1986 design inserts relics autos they're using that design heavily um, so that is also featured in 2021 top series one and the silver pack mojo refractors are back again for 2021 and very special if you pull one of these it's going to be amazing there is the history of tops buybacks they have bought back one card from each of the years that tops has been in existence and they have stamped them one of one and will send them back uh, it, as a buyback and you can find them in packs so pretty amazing um those are awesome cards R almost impossible to pull but man if you find one it's a giant pull there also is a Topps double header insert, a two sided card, which is pretty exciting. And the short print image variations, of course, are returning for 2021. And don't forget, you also get the unique experience tickets. So let's cover off on the parallels real quick. Like I said, there are 13 different uh, colors in the rainbow parallel this year. Uh, we've got the rainbow foil, which is one in 10 packs. You've got the gold foil which is one in two packs, but you're only going to find those in jumbo. You've got the gold cards, which are going to be numbered uh, to 2021. You've got the vintage stock, which is going to be numbered to 99. The Independence Day, which will be numbered to 76. The black, which is numbered to 70, which you will only find in hobby and jumbo. The new platinum anniversary, which is also numbered to 70. And then, of course, we've got the Mother's Day and Father's Day, each numbered to 50. The Memorial Day, which you can see over there on the right, which is going to be numbered to 25. The clear variation, which only has 100 of the 330 card subjects. Those are available in hobby format only, not even jumbo. Uh, uh, but those are each numbered to 10. And of course, you get printing plates one of one and a 70th anniversary parallel one of one. Now, something to note on the one of ones, they are actually the same color as the platinum anniversary numbered to 70. It's actually a printing error that happened that they announced on Top's Twitter. So just know that the one of one and the platinum anniversary 70 are the same exact color. And yes, it is an error. So let's cover off on the inserts. For 2021, a lot of brand new ones. Kind of excited about the inserts for Series 1 this year. We're first going to have the 70 Years of Tops Baseball. That's got 70 cards in it. And then you've got a Chrome variation, which is only going to be available in retail tins. Then we have the 1952 Tops Redo. There's 50 cards in that. You get one per retail pack. And there is a parallel rainbow of red, black, and platinum. And you have Chrome variations, which you will find in one in 10 retail packs with basically the same sort of parallel, just a super fractor at the end. And don't forget one of the ones that you will probably pull the most of. You've got the 1986 Tops Baseball 35th anniversary, 100 cards in that subset. You've got a blue, black, platinum, red, and gold parallel rainbow. And there's more inserts. In Target Packs, you can find a Cody Bellinger highlight set. There's going to be 30 cards in that set. The Home Run Challenge cards 
return for 2021. You scratch off a coat on the back. You guess the day that someone's going to hit a home run. If you get it right, Top sends you a numbered card. Kind of a cool little idea there. Those return. And then we have Stars and Service. That's going to have 25 cards this year. And we have the History of Tops, which you can see over there on the right, which celebrates moments in Tops history. Then we have the Tops double headers, which I mentioned earlier. They're a two sided card, which features two different players. And w- there's 25 cards in that set. We've also got Tops throughout the years. There's 30 cards in that set with a large parallel rainbow. There are some die cuts in Series 1, which is pretty cool. The Tops Platinum Player die cuts, 25 cards in that subset. Uh, with a parallel, with the standard insert parallel rainbow and the box toppers, which you see over there on the right, the 1951 Tops Major League All Star box topper. There's 25 cards in that set, and you will only find them in jumbo hobby boxes. Very cool set from Tops's first year of production. Then don't forget, you can also find the unique experience ticket. There's 25 tickets total inserted randomly into the thousands if not millions of packs of top series one so going on to the relics first we have the 1986 tops baseball relics so you can see what that looks like over on the right probably ones that will be pretty common to find in packs but there's 53 cards in that set and the platinum one of one is only available in hobby and jumbo there's also some manufactured relics that you can get. One is going to be the iconic card manufactured relics. So there's 50 cards in that set, only available in hobby and jumbo formats. Then there is the in the name relics, which is 70 cards. They're each numbered to one of one, but what they do is they take one letter of a player's name and make that a patch. So if it's Mike Trout, there's actually five Mike Trouts because you would have the T-R-O-U-T in the name. So each card is a one of one and features one letter out of a player's last name. Then the probably the most common one that you are going to find is the Major League Materials Relic, which is 42 cards, a large parallel rainbow. Again, the one of one is only available in Hobby and Jumbo packs. And even more relics. We've got the Postseason Performance Relics, 30 cards each numbered to 99 with a small red and platinum parallel. You've got the Spring Training Cap Logo Patch, which is a manufactured relic as well. You can see that over there on the right. There are 50 cards in in that, and that is also only available in Hobby and Jumbo. And then finally, you have the Topps 70th Anniversary Logo Patch, which is a 25-card set. And those are going to be the relics that you find in Blaster Packs in the retail format. Some more relics that we have, the World Series Champion Relics which is going to have 15 cards and that will be, they'll each be numbered to 99. That's going to feature Dodgers players. There will be very hard to find sketch cards. The artists on that are still to be announced and a shaped sketch card as well. And then we also have those history of tops baseball buybacks. Each of those cards is going to be 70 of them. I've heard that they are encased and all of them will be a one of one. So those would be an amazing hit. Uh, probably some of the most valuable cards that you would pull out of this set. There's also autographed relics. So let's cover off on those. We've got the Major League Materials autographs. There's going to be 30 cards in that set with a small parallel rainbow. We've got the Postseason Performance Auto Relics, which is 24 cards, each numbered to 50 or less with a small parallel rainbow. And the Spring Training Cap Logo Patch, which is 40 cards numbered to 10 or less as well. And even more, you've got the Topps 70th Anniversary Logo Patch Auto. There's 17 cards in that set, each numbered to 10 or less. A fantastic pull if you can get one of those. Apparently, they're only available in blaster boxes. You've got the Topps Reverence Auto Patch, which is over on the right. One of my favorite, favorite relics that you can pull out of any set. It is numbered to 41. You can only find it in Hobby and Jumbo. There's 41 cards and they are each numbered to 10 and you can get parallels in that. Then there'll be the World Series Champion Auto Relics. There's going to be 13 cards in that set, each numbered to 50 or less. And now we get to the autographs that you can pull out of 2021. Some very cool ones here. We'll fly through them here pretty quickly. 
First is going to be the 70 years of Topps baseball autos. You can see what those look like over there on the right with the Christian Yelich card. 69 different cards. I believe that these are going to be pretty easy to pull. Um, a parallel rainbow of black, gold, red, and platinum. And the ones that will be much harder to pull are going to be the 70 years of Topps baseball dual autos. Each of those are numbered to five and there's only 15 cards total. Then you've got the 1986 Topps Baseball Autos, probably the most common one that you'll pull. 104 different cards in that um, subset with a large parallel rainbow. Keep in mind, the reds numbered to 25 are only available in hobby boxes, and the platinums are only available in hobby and jumbo boxes. Then you've got that Cody Bellinger highlights uh, subset that's available in Target. There are autoed versions. There are 30 cards in that set. So more autos that you can pull. Postseason performance autos, 25 cards, number to 50 or less. Obviously, that's going to have players from the postseason of 2020. You've got the stars and service autos, 16 cards, each number to 10 or less. Very hard pulls there. You've got the tops platinum player die cut autos, which you can see over there on the right with the GOAT, Mr. Mike Trout. 16 cards in that auto subset. Each number to 10 or less would be an amazing pull if you get one of those. And finally, we have the World Series champion autos numbered thir uh, 13 cards, each numbered to 50 or less. And there are some cut signatures and the names on the cut signature list are awesome. Go check it out. There's 50 cards in that there, each numbered to one or one, some amazing baseball greats. And finally, those box toppers, the 1951 Tops Major League All-Stars. There's 15 cards in that uh, auto subset and they're each going to be numbered to 10. Again, only available in jumbo. So, Take a deep breath there. And now we go, great. So we can pull all these great cards. But what are the best teams that we can get in a break? Who should we be looking for? Are there any sleeper teams out there? Well, I've done the research. And here is who I think the best team is in 2021 Top Series 1. I believe it is the New York Yankees. And here's why. They've got 14 different base cards. They've got 50 five different autos, 69 inserts, 10 different relics. Some of those autos, I think six of them are like cut signatures. Um, the Yankees typically are always one of the best teams in the flagship set because of how many people follow the Yankees. But the Yankees, you are not going to go wrong if you hit them in a break. A very solid set. When you go look at the auto checklist, it is fantastic. When you look at the rookies, they've got uh, they've got Davey Garcia in there. Yes, it's a pitcher one, but they've got a couple rookies. Um, some very nice cards throughout the entire set. Some very nice inserts. So I think you can't go wrong with the Yankees. I do believe that they are the best team. However, if you are looking for the most autos, you are going to want to turn to the Dodgers. And you might want to turn to the retail format, specifically Target. Now, they've got more cards in the base set than any other team. So the Dodgers have the most autos and the most base. You can make a case that they might be the best team in this set. However, they've got 20 base cards, 81 autos. However, 30 of those autos are Cody Bellinger autos in those target packs. So that brings you all the way down to 51 autos. They also have 76 inserts. However, 30 of those are the ones from the Cody Bellinger thing from Target only. So if you like Cody Bellinger, get to Target. You really want to get in on the Dodgers. If you're buying into hobby boxes, I still believe that the Yankees are probably a little bit of a better team than the Dodgers in here. If you're looking for a solid choice, I claim that the Detroit Tigers have a fantastic um, representation in Topps 2021 Series 1. They've got 12 base cards. 14 autos, 17 different inserts. However, they are they do have four different rookie cards, and they are solid rookie cards on top of that. Casey Mize, Tariq Skubal, some more in there. Um, solid choice, I think, is going to be the Detroit Tigers, and I think this is I, – I almost made them a sleeper, but I claim you can't make the Detroit Tigers a sleeper any longer. But what – who's going to have the most value? What team's going to have the most value? I think that's the Chicago White Sox. They've got 14 base cards, 23 autos, 22 inserts, three different rookie cards, um, and a very nice auto checklist. And one of those rookies is going to be Nick Madrigal. And don't forget, you've got Luis Roberts' Rookie Cup card in there. Um, um, and you've uh, did I say Luis Madrigal? I meant Nick Madrigal. Um, 
but you've got some very nice rookies on there, a very nice top to bottom um, um, checklist for them, some great autos in there. You've got like Frank Thomas and all sorts of different autos that you can pull for the White Sox. I think the White Sox hold the most value. Anyone that wants to tell me different, feel free to comment in the sections below. Um, another one, a sleeper. I've got the Houston Astros, the trash can. Everyone doesn't like them. Houston Astros, they've got 11 base cards. They've got 23 different autos, 32 inserts, and 16 relics. And don't forget, they also have three different rookie cards. So don't sleep on the, Ast on the Astros. They are a very, very a solid team in this set. And you've got the Miami Marlins. Now, why would I pick the Marlins? They've only got 13 base They've only got seven different autos you can pull and only five different inserts. First of all, I think you could get the Miami Marlins very cheaply in a pick your team break. Um, I think you could trade for them really easy in a random team break. But don't sleep on the fact that they are a very young team and they have more rookie cards in this set than any other team in the set overall they've got five different rookie cards so if you are a rookie card chaser you're gonna want to watch the miami marlins they've got a pretty good lineup of rookie cards in there are you going to pull a lot of autos out of a break probably not are you going to pull a lot of inserts probably not are you going to get some rookies most definitely so check out the marlins a very very deep sleeper team but i think the marlins could pay dividends going down the road if any of those five rookies do get any traction at all the marlins are definitely going to pay off for you in a break so with all that being said here's my opinions on what top series one is offering first of all my set positives First and foremost, it's the most iconic set in the baseball card collecting hobby. They're celebrating 70 years this year, so they're doing a lot of hype around it. They've done a very good job of kind of celebrating their heritage and bringing that 70 years to life. And it is a set that any baseball card collector is after. Um, another one, strong checklist. You've got a lot of rookie cards. Out of 330 cards, 50 of them are rookie cards. I do like that it's only 330 cards. It's streamlined it a little bit and taken away some of the fluff that's been in there the last few years. I like that we've taken it down to 330 cards. I also love the, the flagship set, Series 1, Series 2 update, um, but really Series 1 and Series 2. It's a very collectible set for a broad range of hobbyists. If you are a set collector, it's a great set to collect. If you're a newcomer to the hobby, it is the one set that I tell you to get familiar with before you start buying into all of the other sets. If you're a rookie chaser, there's always some great rookies in the flagship set. If you like autos, some of the best autos you can pull from Tops are featured in their flagship set. There, You can't go wrong. If you collect baseball cards, this is a set for you. And then finally, a lot of those insert sets that were, it, were introduced, those have really strong checklists this year as well. Plus, there's some auto variations. So overall, the inserts, fantastic. Um, the set itself is fantastic. A little streamlined, a little bit more thought out. Lots of different rookies. So a very, very solid set overall. And there also is a fantastic mix of Topps design history. The 1986 card is a very iconic design. They've got the 1951 um, in the box toppers. They've got the 1952 in the retail. So a lot of different um, designs that they're bringing out. So very cool that they are celebrating their 70 years and their heritage. But there's always some set negatives as well. And I think for 2021, maybe the biggest disappointment for me is going to be that the card design is not very original and there's some design flaws in it. If you go back and look at 2020 Don Russ and look at 2021 Tops, they are virtually the same looking card from a design standpoint. Um, and I, even if you go beyond that, the names are written very, uh, they're tiny on the front of the card. Very hard to read. I feel like the name should maybe be brought out a little bit more. 
Um, when you see the Rookie Cup card, which features the second year of uh, the All-Star Rookies that Topps nominates every year, the Rookie Cup is floating in the middle of the card uh, to, the le- to the left middle of the card. It's very oddly p- placed, although I do like the borders and the white borders. I think it's going to be great for the parallels. I do think that this is another set, just like 2020, that they're designing more for the Chrome set than they are the flagship set, which I think is a mistake. However, I do think that a lot of times they think about what do these cards look like in a chromium variation, and that very much dictates what the design is going to be for that given year. Another thing that I'm not high on, uh, very high production run with long odds, which is true for any flagship set, but with the popularity of the hobby, I believe that you are going to see even a higher production run this year, maybe not a ton more, but with just the demand, that it makes it almost impossible not to, you got to get people packs to keep people interested, so you know that production run is going up. Are we hitting a bubble? That's for you to decide, and that is not for a set review video. That is for another video. Um, The other thing that I'm not really high on, the Relic lineup is almost exactly the same as it was in 2020. Do I like that reverence, uh, the Topps reverence Relic? Sure, it is a fantastic Relic, Um, but there's nothing really new in the Relic lineup. And my biggest frustration out of Topps um, flagship is that they count a manufactured relic as a hit in the hobby format. In the hobby format, hobby boxes are expensive, and my expectation is is that a manufactured relic should not count as a hit. And that is and and. I feel pretty strongly about that. If you're going to give me a relic, give me a game used relic or give me an auto. Do me something like that. Um, But they have not done that again. And there will be manufactured relics that count as hits in the hobby format. Another thing, a few key rookies from the 2020 season were held out of the base set. Now, I get that there's so many rookies that were called up in 2020 uh, that that may, could have been featured in here. But there are some names that definitely, definitely should have been featured in the base set and were not. Probably the most egregious would be Mr. Cronenworth um, on the Padres. Uh, Jake Cronenworth was runner of the was runner up to Rookie of the Year in the National League. They held him out for Series Two, obviously. Uh, Cabrian Hayes on the Pirates. He is actually in the set, but he doesn't have a base card, so they're holding his rookie card. So a few of the rookies are missing, um, and that's a little disappointing. Finally, we've got a high cost for a guaranteed auto. The only way you can get a guaranteed auto is to buy a jumbo box, and jumbo boxes are north of 200 and pushing towards 300 right now because of the popularity of the hobby. That is really expensive for one auto. Uh, the cost per auto being around 250 bucks, you can find much better um, uh, odds on pulling an auto and cost per auto odds. Um, throughout almost any other set in in the flagship set i believe it should just be lower than that but overall a very good set so that brings us to our sensational set ranking where does tops 2021 fall on the ranking well i showed you the scoring system earlier it has been revised 80 to 100 now gets you five stars not 85 to 100 like it was last year so basically you know 20 points is a one as a one star 40 points gets you to two so on and so forth a three star set a very good set overall uh might be some reasons you want to stay away from it probably some gaps but overall, not a bad set if you like some of the players that are in it. I would define a four-star set as a very solid set, one you should definitely consider buying. If there's some reservations, maybe you stay away. But for the most part, I think most collectors will really like a four-star set. And then, of course, a five-star set is a set that collectors should definitely be getting into. Um, not a lot of holes in the set. One of the top premier sets that you're going to find out of the year, and maybe even an iconic set moving on down the road so where does tops 2021 lie a series one lie in all of that well we break it down into 10 different categories appeal base checklist inserts parallels auto checklist pack odds card quality historical value artistic value cost value so here's where i landed for appeal tops series one should appeal to virtually every collector 
If it does not, there's something wrong with you. However, I'm knocking it a half a point this year based purely off of the price of the cards. I do think that people that buy hobby, it's become so expensive. There are some people that have been turned off by that, and I think it needs to be acknowledged. So I'm going to give it a 9.5. Normally, we'd give it a 10. The base set checklist, I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8. Would have loved to have gone higher on this. However, the fact that Tops held back some players that they normally wouldn't have based on their own criteria due to the pandemic shortened season and the glut of rookies that maybe would have shown up in Top Series 1, um, I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8. I do believe that there was a large miss, miss on Jake Cronenworth um, that's kind of egregious, and he should have been in the set especially considering there's other rookies that only played like four games and got into the set. Um, the inserts and relics, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7.5. Not a big fan of the relics for Series 1. However, the revamped insert lineup very much does save it. Some very cool 70th anniversary stuff. So the inserts are really good. The relics a little bit lower. But overall, we give it a 7.5. The parallels and the variations. Look, you've got the awesome short print variations. You've got a nice 13 color rainbow with the new platinum um, one that was introduced. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7.5 as well. And then with our auto checklist, if you look at the inserts and if you look at the overall auto checklist, um, it's pretty strong. I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8. Might be hard to pull some of those rookie autos and whatnot, but if you look at some of the retired stars and some of the names that you can pull out of here, um, I think you're going to be... I, I think you're going to be pulling decent autos fairly regularly out of the hobby format. I give it an eight. Pack odds in production. I'm going all the way down to a three on this. I was tempted to even go down to two. Um, I believe that this set is going to be produced a lot, just like all the other flagships. But there's a lot of different formats. Um, a lot of people that are buying into the hobby formats and stuff. So uh, the, I believe once we see the final production run numbers, you're going to see it a little bit higher in 2020, which is also a little bit higher than 2019. So as we keep going up those pack odds in the production, uh, that number is going to keep coming down. Card quality, going to go ahead and give it a four. It's a standard baseball card. Nothing fancy about it. Nothing all that great about it either. Um, so I go ahead and give it a four. Maybe maybe give it a five. Historical value, however, I'm going to go ahead and go to 8.5. This is, again, it's Topps flagship. When people think of rookie cards and they go searching for rookie cards, they go looking for a Topps rookie card. That is the search criteria. So you want the Topps rookie card um, for any baseball player. So I do think that the historical value has proven that Topps flagship holds its value very well over time for certain cards. Artistic value, I'm going to give it a 6.5. I would have gone lower. I am not a huge fan of the 2021 flagship design. I think it looks very uh, Don Russ to me personally. The reason I give it a 6.5 is because of a lot of the other sets that they put in there. The, some of the inserts are awesome. I love the 86, the, the 86 inserts um, and a lot of the celebration of its heritage, I think, kind of saves that. But overall, I'm not a big fan of the actual base set design um, it just looks it looks cheap to me um, then finally we have a cost value I still gave it an eight I do not for a hobby format I would give it probably a six but the fact that retail still exists and the fact that if you are diligent you can still find it the fact that some of the manufacturers or some of the distributors like Target have started limiting uh, people from buying out the whole stock right, right from the get-go. I think you're going to be able to find some of it. And if you can find some in the retail, it's pretty good. So I go ahead and give it an 8 overall. So what we're going to do, we're going to add up all of those scores. So what score does 2021 Top Series 1 get? Well, its final rate rating is a 70.2. Five. So it comes right in as a mid-tier four-star set. It is a great set. You're going to have a great rookie class from this set. Um, remember, there's 50 rookie cards in here. There is a ton of different autos. The heritage um, of the 70 years is very much being celebrated. One thing that I haven't mentioned much, a lot of the photography from the flagship set is phenomenal. It's some of the best photography that you're going to find anywhere in the hobby, if not the best. Um, 
and it's top series one guys it's really hard to knock a set this iconic um and that means so much to the card collecting hobby do i think that tops has room to improve most definitely they always do but i think they have done enough uh, for this set to really kind of bring forth that 70th anniversary and it'll be fun to watch throughout the 2021 season to see how they play with the design and to see how they play with the checklist on into series two and into update so what does it rank to date well out of two sets so far the other set being tops archive which I gave a 54. You will not find a review online. I did not do an in-depth review on that. However, going through the one cent sensational set ranking, I gave it a 54. Top series one right now is the number one set of the season with a score of 70.5. What did it score last year though? It scored a 68.5. So a small improvement over series one um, from 2020. And I believe series one 2020 is a really good set. Um, so a little bit of a better score, still pretty close, which is something I would expect. I expect the scores to kind of stay close year over year based upon the sets and how they appeal to people and what they mean to the hobby. So with that, guys, if you didn't do it at the beginning, please be sure to hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you like these set reviews because I will be doing them all throughout the 2021 card season. Um, and it will give you all of the information you need to know before you buy into breaks, before you buy hobby boxes, before you go search in retail. Um, and be sure to hit that bell so you're one of the first people that can view the videos. And comment below, let me know if you are getting into Top Series 1, what you think about the design, what you think about the checklist, and anything else pertaining to the hobby would love to get your comments i i replied back to most of them and with that guys i am going to sign off i hope you are having fantastic luck on your personal pack polls i hope you enjoy opening top series one as much as i will and as always be good to your family to your friends to your neighbors and until next time take care